Hello everyone and welcome. Um, I wanted to show uh, a tutorial on how I do grass in Iris Romantic Country coloring books uh, with ink tints. So I will be coloring in the second tail and this is the page right here that we'll be working on. I do want to show you a couple of examples of uh, grass that I have done so you kind of know whether it's something you want to watch or not. So this is the page, first page that I did grass in where um, I realized that it was my favorite way to do grass because one of the biggest things holding me back is the large grassy areas in these books. Uh, there's a lot of them and just a lot of green foliage in general. So this was kind of the one that sparked um, my love of using ink tents for the grass. Um, here's another example uh, with some different colors and kind of a more flat uh, space um, and yeah I just think it adds some nice visual texture and she has drawn in the little blades of grass so it kind of adds I think so anyways um, the colors that I want to use are Hooker's green and apple green. Um, so this is, yeah, 1520 and 1400. I want it to be um, light, kind of a lighter grass because um, I want it to have a springtime feel to it. Uh, so it's, it's really complicated, guys. I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, I kind of just will do a lot of, with a darker color first, uh, just a lot of random uh, what's the word? horizontal lines like this. It doesn't have to be perfect or beautiful or anything. Uh, that's the beauty of ink tents is it can be a little bit uh, lazy? I don't know if lazy is the right word, but um, at least with how I use it, I I don't I don't put that much effort in with them, and you still get really great results, um, especially for larger spaces. It um, is a little bit more tricky, so I usually go for smaller spaces. Unless it's something that has a lot of visual texture, like grass, because it's really hard to get uh, a smooth um, activation with intense, um, just because when it dries, it dries. Uh, but this paper actually works, I think, personally. I know everyone has their own preferences. But I think this paper works great with ink tents. Oops, sorry. I'm jiggling a lot. Um, there we go. So yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, this is complicated stuff. <laughs> um, and as far as like pressure, I'm using fairly like medium to hard, so not like super hard, but definitely enough pressure. Uh, the more pressure you use with ink tints, obviously the more saturation you'll get. So for this darker color, I definitely want more of that. Now this, these little detailed parts, it's a little tricky to get more of the random. So I tend to uh, slow down and um, do more just like regular coloring rather than this weird zigzag thing I'm doing. So let's see, let's get some in between here. Okay. Oh, 
I, um, I forgot to mention. So the, normally when I do, uh, this grass <clears throat> with ink tents, I will choose a really dark color and a really light color. Uh, because with ink tents you can, um, get away with using those colors to get, you know, a blended middle color. Uh, so that's something to keep in mind is if, you're t if your colors are too close together in hue or um, contrast, so uh, like, you know, a spring green and a fern wouldn't look great, or maybe even like white olive and a fern, it would be a more subtle kind of grass. So if you wanted more of that texture, you do, I would do um, Ionian green with the fern. So I, I hope that makes sense where um, generally choosing a super dark color and then a significantly lighter one uh, tends to work better for me. No. It's tricky. I didn't think about like all these little spaces <laughs> I've got a color in between. I, I don't really care too much about the leaves because I can easily color over that with person of color. Okay, next I'm going to go in with the apple green. And this I do take a little bit more time with. I go over everything uh, just because it helps blend the colors a little bit and with this I'm using medium pressure not as much pressure as I was using with the darker green uh, because it covers more area and I've found that the lighter green like this particular green is um, very vibrant so I don't want it to overpower the dark green all right so once I'm done coloring all of this in I will come back all right so now I have all of the green colored in uh, next up is activating the ink tents. So I'm going to be using um, an eight, size eight round brush. Uh, I used to use um, like a water brush like this for my ink tents, but I found it was a lot harder to control how much water um, was coming out of the brush. And um, they tend to, at least for me, like splay out like this. And so it's kind of hard to get into those more detailed areas. Um, or is this papers? Uh, so I personally prefer using a paintbrush, but um, you can't go too wrong with a water brush either. Um, so I just dip my brush in and give it a few wipes. And then um, I tend to go on the darker areas first and um, kind of blend it into the lighter areas uh, and then depending on how it looks I might blend some of the light into the dark um, this is a nice bright spring green um, to blend the ink tints I use uh, kind of a circular up and down it's kind of a yeah circular ish up and down just to get that to blend <laughs> excuse me all right uh, and I generally go along the uh, grain of the direction that I want the grass to look so since I colored it uh, horizontally, uh, unless I'm working in like a specific, you know, more detailed area, I will go horizontally. 
Um, but yeah, I just, I love using the round brush because it holds quite a bit of water, so I don't have to dip in too much. And then because of the tip, I'm easily able to get into these smaller spaces uh, without worrying about um, intense getting into the other elements. Okay, and I'm going to go into this area right here. Also, uh, when using Intense, uh, if I get to, you know, a larger area and it leads into these smaller areas, I will complete doing the larger area first, just because these smaller areas um, kind of have like a visual cutoff a little bit. Uh, and so it, it makes if the ink tents dries and there's that weird overlap line it's not as um, obvious just because there's already a break right there so it's not as big as if i had you know stopped doing it right here and then you know filled this in before i filled this in uh, so uh, that's just a intense in general tip is when you're working on, you know, an area of your coloring page that has large and small stop before you get to the small parts and keep going with the large parts so that you can make sure it blends a little bit more smoothly. Um, another, <laughs> I'm going to sell you on this brush, I said, I'm pretty sure. Uh, I just, especially for this book, um, because I'm able to control how much water goes down with this paintbrush, uh, I don't use very much water, and so there's not very much buckling that happens. Um, like, there's a little bit, um, but if I, you know, shut the book right after working on this, uh, for the most part, it will flatten out, and it doesn't really affect the page too much. So, yeah, there you have it. Super easy, super fast. Um, I'm all about filling up large areas fast. I would consider myself a lazy colorist, so I try to find, you know, ways to do things where it looks, you know, visually interesting. Uh, but... It doesn't take very much time <laughs> to do uh, so I thought you know this might be a just fun way you know if you're already proficient with ink tents just a fun way to do a different technique or practice with them and hopefully it will help uh, you if you have any uh, intimidation with this book. It'll help you overcome that hurdle of uh, filling in a large space. Because another thing that I like to use Intense for are trees. The trees in this book. Um, again, because uh, trees are, you know, they, they aren't one single color and I found that I can get some nice visual texture with the ink tents. Um, anyways, pretty much done. So once I complete this little part, I will shut this. Um, normally, if I plan on using ink tents on other large elements, so these trees, uh, I would have these colored in and color these in, and then I would shut it and let it dry uh, for the night or for the day, depending on when I'm working on it. Um, and then I'll come back in and work on these smaller elements, regardless of whether I'm using uh, prism colors or ink tents for them. And also for these like smaller elements, I don't really, that are on the ground, um, unless it's something that I want to like make sure it's pure white, which it is very rare. Uh, I don't really 
care if it gets a little bit of ink tips in there. So yeah, I hope this video was helpful. Um, and yeah, so let me know if there's any other things with ink tents, because I, I think I want to do a, um, like, beginner tips, like, things I wish I'd known, or just, like, easy little tips, um, because there is a learning curve with ink tents, I believe, so, um, yeah. Anyways, let me show what this looks like a little closer up. And yeah, anyways, thanks so much for watching. And if you haven't already, be sure to like and subscribe. Happy drawing!